hello everyone. I'm happy and proud to be here today. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Maxim Zelinsky, uh, uh, and I work as an engineer in Altaras. So, and uh, my talk uh, called "Who Lives in Our Garden," and it's about containers, and precisely, it's about containers in Cloud Foundry. Uh, what actually containers are? Uh, well, container is a combination of operating system primitives that allows uh, separate out set of processes and make them uh, pretend like they are in uh, own operating system. Uh, containers uh, offer high level isolation with many applications running under the host operating system. All of them sharing uh, certain operating system libraries and uh, OS kernel. So basically, uh, <coughs> containers is just processes in, in your operating system. Uh, well, and since uh, they are, don't have to load up uh, operating system uh, and provides almost no overhead, you can create containers in a split second uh, rather than minutes for virtual machines. That makes containers perfect technology for different use cases like uh, platform as a service, Cloud Foundry. Uh, let's talk about uh, history of uh, containers implementation in Cloud Foundry. Uh, containers was a first class citizens uh, from the very beginning of uh, Cloud Foundry existence. Uh, so in 2011, um, first uh, implementation of uh, Container Manager was introduced in, and its name was Borden. It was uh, written mo mostly in Ruby with the bits of C code. Um, in, order, in order to provide a, a process isolation from host operating system and from other processes, uh, was uh, used Linux namespaces feature. It's a, it's a kernel feature. Uh, C groups for uh, resource limiting and management. It's also a kernel feature and um, uh, pivot root uh, uh, system call uh, to uh, to file system isolation. So that that how it uh, was designed. Um, it was quite monolith monolithic. Uh, Warden server which was providing uh, service to Warden clients, DA, droplet execution agents, uh, talking to, uh, to Warden by Protobuf-based protocol uh, was coupled in a single application with a container manager, which was responsible for container lifecycle routines. Uh, so in, in about 2014, brand new Cloud Foundry runtime was introduced called Diego instead of good old uh, DAA. Uh, it has a lot of cool features like smart orchestration and so on, but I will not go into details as, as far as my topic is about containers, not, not, not the whole runtime. And yeah, as a part of new Diego runtime, new container manager was introduced, Warden. I mean, Garden, sorry. Uh, so what has changed? Garden was uh, uh, re-implemented uh, re uh, in uh, Go programming language as, as many other components of Cloud Foundry. Uh, well, basically, Garden stands for Go Warden. Uh, but uh, what most important, uh, Garden was designed in a modular way. What does it mean? Oops, sorry. Okay, uh, here is a garden architecture. Uh, still, uh, garden clients, which now is uh, Diego cells, talk to a garden server by protocol. It's still uh, protobuf based, but uh, also garden provides uh, HTTP RESTful uh, API for like debugging purposes. Uh, but in order to provide flexibility, uh, Garden uh, was decoupled from 
uh, garden server was decoupled from container manager, uh, which now lives in separate uh, component called backend. And uh, so garden provides um, unified con contracts that does not depend on uh, underlying containers implementation. Okay, uh, what backends are available today? It's a uh, garden Linux. Uh, at the moment, default Linux container backend for Cloud Foundry and for, for Garden. Uh, Greenhouse, it's a Windows container backend. And uh, uh, one more Linux backend called Guardian. Uh, Guardian Linux backend. Well, uh, it's uh, just a successor of uh, Warden's container impl uh, implementation. It used the same features to provide process isolation, like Linux namespaces, C groups, uh, layered file system, and so on. But uh, there is a killer feature was added to Garden Linux uh, backend, in addition to default uh, native uh, build pack lifecycle, is a uh, ability to run Docker containers. Uh, well, how does it work? First of all, let's dig. Uh, a bit how, how a garden works. Uh, garden, as well as, wa as Warden was, uh, uses layered file systems. Uh, during the default uh, build pack lifecycle, uh, Container Manager takes uh, rootfs, basically a uh, Linux root file system, and mounts it together with uh, another layer with application bits uh, using uh, AUFS by default, it's layered file system. Uh, or optionally overlay FS, uh, to create a single single file system, single mount point to, to pivot root to. Okay, uh, and uh, about Docker images. Um, Docker images themselves consist out of layers, each uh, containing uh, a difference applied on top of a previous layer. Uh, well, probably many of you have seen uh, Docker, Docker files, uh, uh, you've seen uh, from, for example, from Ubuntu latest, from Ubuntu 14.04, uh, and a uh, couple of commands to, to install some software. So we, these com commands creates uh, new layers. Okay, um, so in order to run Docker image, uh, Garen just mount uh, a Docker images, uh, image layers instead of built-in root of S, keeping the rest pretty much the same. Uh, Garden uh, uses libraries from Docker, actually. Uh, Docker is also implemented in uh, Go programming language, so it's quite easy. Um, so contents of container exactly match the contents of the associated Docker image. Uh, there are caveats of running Docker images in Cloud Foundry. Uh, you can use only uh, Docker registry API of version two, which is fine, I think. Um, it, it doesn't support uh, private uh, repos. You can't provide credentials. You can use only public ones. And um, uh, the um, so Diego doesn't cache um, pulled, um, pulled Docker images, so um, you need uh, access to, uh, to Docker, Docker registry every time you, for example, scale, scale up your application. For each new instance, uh, uh, it has to pull a Docker image. So if, for example, uh, Docker registry is unavailable, uh, you can get into trouble. Um, so I took these uh, three points from um, Pivotal's documentation, actually. But um, I have to argue about uh, point two and point three, because, uh, well, there is a project in uh, Cloud Foundry Incubator, which calls Diego Docker Cache Release. It's a Bosch release. And uh, what actually it does, it, it caches Docker images pulled from, from Docker Hub, for example. 
And um, uh, well, you if you use this uh, release, uh, you no no longer rely on uh, Docker Hub availability, for example, and you can provide uh, credentials for your uh, private repos. Uh, well, downside is that first of all, it's still uh, in incubator, so it, it might be not really production ready, and it it it's not supported by uh, Cloud Foundry CLI, CLI actually. But uh, actually, we we deployed this release for one of our customers, and well, he was happy. <laughs> uh, well, it's what we do, making our customers happy. <laughs> so, all right. Um, while uh, Linux is the uh, most popular uh, operating, operating system to deploy applications to, um, still it's not the only one. And uh, .NET applications um, are widely spread in especially in enterprise area, and uh, it's mandatory to support them in uh, modern platform as a service. So um, <coughs> there is uh, one more backend uh, for Garden that uh, actually uh, uh, manages uh, containers in uh, Windows. Um, so uh, the trick is that um, Windows does not support uh, containers as Linux does. Uh, so, but um, Cloud Foundry runtime team managed to deal with it with a couple of tricks. Uh, so, in order to, to create a sort of containers in Windows, uh, <coughs> following features are used. Uh, for um, file system isolation, they create um, uh, user for for every container uh, to uh, to use default Windows ACLs for uh, for file access and so on. Okay, for disk usage limiting, they use uh, NTFS quotas. Um, for CPU and memory limiting, uh, there is a Windows job objects and. Um, uh, for network isolation, um, application la launched inside a container bind directly to external IP of uh, the VM. Okay. And the, the last backend uh, available is called Guardian. Uh, why need for another one Linux container backend? Uh, well, there, is, there are plenty of containers implementation nowadays famous known Docker, um, LXC, uh, that has been for years already, um, container implementation from Google, let me contain that for you, or something like that, uh, OpenVZ, uh, of course, G Garden, and many more, which are not compatible with each other. <laughs> so in 2015, uh, open Containers Initiative uh, appeared to create industry standards around containers to build open, portable, platform, cloud, and hardware-independent containers and runtime format. Um, so the OCI uh, currently provides uh, uh, two specifications, uh, the container image specification and the uh, uh, container runtime specification. But Actually, uh, image spe specification describes uh, how images should be uh, created and stored, and runtime specification specifies how to how to run these images. Actually, uh, so um, it's a list of uh, companies that uh, in OCI, and well, uh, most of. Uh, Containers world players are here, I think, um, and it's huge. So I, I ki kind of believe in in OCI, and uh, well, uh, I was looking for internet just a couple of days ago and saw this tweet. Uh, 
uh, Kelsey Hightower from Kubernetes uh, wrote that uh, uh, they added support of uh, OCI containers. So it looks good. Uh, back to Cloud Foundry. Uh, Garden already supports uh, OCI containers um, for a while, actually. Uh, we are, it's uh, Guardian backend, also called Run C backend. Uh, it's not yet default run uh, backend for uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, and current version is 0 0.9, but uh, from, from the mailing list, uh, version 1.0 is just about to come, and uh, uh, Guardian will become uh, default, default, default backend for containers. Okay, um, I have a bit of practical um, practical slides here about um, debugging tips. So, uh, for those of you who are having troubles with with, with your applications in Cloud Foundry containers, um, sometimes uh, well uh, logs aren't enough. Um, for example, your application doesn't work, and you, uh, you can't figure out figure it out why. Uh, maybe some file is missing, or a file permissions wrong, or I don't know. Um, so, and you want to uh, to go into a container and uh, check it out, what happens to see your processes and so on. Um, with a new Diego runtime as and Garden. And there is a CF SSH command that actually brings you to um, <coughs> you to inside of container, and it looks like this. Actually, I see we have a bit of time, and probably I'll show you some live live demo. Okay, here I have two applications. Uh, one of them, oh, sorry. <laughs> I see, you're done. <laughs> hmm. Now you do, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Okay, uh, here I have uh, two applications. Um, one is deployed to DAA using uh, old uh, Warden Container Manager, and one uh, deployed to, to Diego Cell with a Garden. Um, in this deployment, I have uh, both of, the, of them deployed. So, for example, mm, okay. Uh, I want to uh, to go into uh, Warden application. I'll try to do this. Ah, uh, it doesn't work because uh, Warden does not support this feature. So, um, is are, are there any people who was trying to do such things to to the bug containers? Okay. Um, well, so I'll show you the way how it was before Garden. Okay, I, I add CF trace here and uh, Okay, a lot, lots of information here. Okay, here I see IP address of, of actually VM. Yeah. Um, now I, now I look at Bosch VM's list. Okay, I can see it's runner z1 slash one. Uh, 
I can SSH to it. I have to be um, actually operator of my Cloud Foundry deployment to do this. Okay, I'm 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 here. What next? What next? Um, I know that uh, containers live in uh, where we kept data, warden depots. Uh, okay, I have I, I have six. Oh no, seven containers here. Which one is mine? I don't know. How to figure it out? Um, no way. <laughs> Usually I just uh, go to, oops, sorry, CD, yeah. Go to first and then try to, to run shell. Okay, I'm inside of container. Okay, no, that's not mine. It's a Java <laughs> application. <laughs> yeah, that's how it was actually. Okay. Um, but now I can just do CF SSH. Mm. Yes, I did. And that's it. I'm inside of container without any of these Bosch crazy stuff. And I'd, I don't have to to have access to Bosch and so on. Um, all right. Back to slides. Sorry. One moment, please. Okay. Um, for those of you who want to debug Container Manager itself, uh, not application in inside of container I recommend to take a look at uh, this tool it basically CLI for garden you can create and delete containers shell into it and uh, many other things that uh, that Diego does for example if you if you have a um, single uh, Diego cell and uh, um, garden doesn't work you can just use this tool to connect to uh, and debug it. So, all right, a uh, uh, couple of words about container security. Uh, how, how secure containers are? Uh, well, if we are talking about Linux-based uh, containers provided by uh, Guardian Linux and Guardian backends, uh, well, they are based on namespaces and C groups, core Linux uh, kernel features that have been around for years already and um, used as a basis for many popular projects like Docker and yeah, lots of them. So I believe that you, um, you can trust Cloud Foundry containers as much as you can trust Linux kernel itself. Well, of course, as far as uh, Garden is just a software, uh, there are bugs and there are security issues, but uh, and I've seen a couple of them, but not too much actually. Um, another point about security is uh, this uh, diagram. I mean, um, each container in uh, in Cloud Foundry in Garden actually. Uh, uses uh, its own subnet with the interfaces, uh, access limited by firewall. Uh, well, it's a, a benefit from point of view of security, uh, but also it makes uh, hard to, to interconnect containers between each other, but it doesn't really fit to Platform as a service uh, uh, ideology. So, for example, in Docker, uh, you have a single uh, subnet for your containers, and you can create links between them. In Garden, you can't. Um, so, what's the Garden users uh, projects that use Garden now? Uh, well, obviously, it's 
Cloud Foundry itself. And it's uh, Concourse CI. It's a continuous integration and continuous de delivery tool with a more modern approach built by uh, actually uh, same team, I mean, Cloud Foundry community. Um, it supports pipelining, and it's cool. If I recommend to try it, actually. Uh, also, Bosch Lite. Uh, Bosch Lite is um, um, it's actually Bosch deployed in in a single uh, single VM. It uses Garden containers uh, as uh, as its like infrastructure to create jobs. Instead of creating VMs, it creates jobs inside of uh, garden containers. Um, and I don't know. You can use garden in your uh, in your project, for example. It's not so hard. I tried to just uh, compile and run garden. It, it took me a, about half of an hour. So uh, if, if it fits your needs, you can try it. That's it from my side. Uh, thank you. Um, maybe you have any questions?